Hey guys, so in this video, I wanted to talk to you about mine and April Moon's song, Happy Place, and tell you some stories behind making the music. We're also joined this video by Jamie and Jason from April Moon. Hey. Hello from our camper van, AKA the clubhouse. In the UK. In the UK, the cold freezing UK. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie and Jason from April Moon here, just uh, contributing a bit to Curzy's video. And I wanted to start with telling a story about how this song came about. So Jamie and Jason spend three months here in Fort Ventura. They're from Canada and they live in Liverpool in the UK. And they normally come here January, February and March every year. So when they arrived back here in January, I met up with them for a pizza, a pepperoni pizza in the old town in Corralejo. And we were catching up and everything, talking about all the stories about van life for them, about life here in Fort Ventura. And at one point I said, guys, we should write a song about the island. I wanted to write a song about island life and what it's like being here in the sun. To be honest, it was just an idea that I threw out there to them. And literally we finished that meal, went home, and the next day, Jamie and Jason sent me over a demo of their idea for this song called Happy Place. You will ride the Brooklyn bus down Highway 104 Just like I had so many times before Fight my way through the waves, the sea don't want me there, and the color blue gets and it was just perfect. I was hair. listening to it, I was literally like dancing in my room, like, oh my god, guys, you've smashed this vibe. And uh, they sent me over the first verse and the chorus, and it was really amazing, like just the perfect holiday Fort Ventura island vibe song. And the beginning of that demo was the first line of the song I'm gonna ride that rumbling bus down Highway 104. And obviously that's very specific to Fort Ventura. Highway 104 is the grandest place highway, as I'm sure a lot of you know. And I love that, that it made it specific, but it was also not just isolating the song to Fort Ventura because Highway 104 just sounds like a cool highway, which it is, but it's also just like a, a cool lyric. So I love that from, uh, I think Jamie wrote that lyric. I love that lyric. I'm gonna throw you over to April Moon right now. They're gonna talk about some of the lyrics as well. What I wanted to talk about was my favorite line in the song which is uh, the color blue gets tangled in my hair, which was one that I wrote. And I just think it's a, a cool, quirky way of describing what is like an essential part of the island to me, which is the color blue. Um, obviously the sea, the sky, it's like just this overwhelming thing that assaults you when you come to the island and is like just such a memorable thing. And I think it just like, it gets tangled up in, in everything. It's like, yeah, it's There is one awkward over. thing about the line. Um, all of us wrote uh, lines in the song, all three of us. Um, but that one was written by Jamie, and it's sung by Kersey, of course. And uh, But when we do the song here in the UK, where Kersey is not, um, I have to sing the line, and it makes very little sense. So what I usually sing instead of the color blue gets tangled in my hair is I sing uh, the color blue gets tangled in your hair. <laughs> uh, uh, flip it all around. Yeah. Another thing I loved about the demo they sent and about the song is in the chorus, the words, I think I found my happy place. I just love, I love that there's some almost, it's almost like some innocence in it. Like, I think I found, it's not like I found it. It's like, you're almost unsure. You almost don't want to say it. It's like when you think you've fallen in love or something, you don't want to say, you're almost scared to say I think I've found someone, or I think I've found a place. It's like there's some innocence, some sort of insecurity in it, you know? I think I found my happy place. I believe this smile will never leave my face. I love that from, uh, from their lyrics. And then, yeah, we met over the next couple of days, finished the next verse together, the bridge together. We wanted the bridge to be a little bit different, like a bit of a darker side, so like being away from your happy place, which we had. Uh, and then finished it up and we were just really excited to get on with uh, recording the song and the music video. So I want to talk a little bit about the uh, recording process. I'm going to throw you over to April Moon for this bit. So one thing that we all agreed on when we were recording the song was that we wanted it to have some ukulele in it. And, and Harry said, well, I've ordered a ukulele. I'm expecting it any day. So we we're all really excited, you know, and, and um, <clears throat> but the, the uh, the day comes to record, and you clearly wasn't there. We had to borrow one, <laughs> but um, thanks, Eric. We yeah, we got <laughs> the ukulele into the studio, and we're like, okay, great, let's go. And then I'm looking at Harry, and he's looking at me. And we're like, well, neither of us play the ukulele. 
So we had to first sit and learn like what the chords would be on the ukulele. Figure out the and I think you had to tr like transpose them because we were playing with capos on the guitars insane. and it was like it was all of a sudden we're playing like figuring out all these weird ukulele chords. So really I played about half the song on ukulele and Harry played about half the song so just to kind of make it you know so that it would we didn't have to each learn the whole song you know? yeah but obviously <laughs> for doing it live Harry likes to play it on ukulele so he's had to go back and figure out all the chords and yeah. learn it all there you go he learned the ukulele just for this song mm -hmm. and you did as well actually mm -hmm. kind of it's not the first time you've learned <laughs> instruments we've got a new song coming out and Jason kind of like invented his own banjo tuning to be able to add some much needed banjo to it. I don't know. Sneak peek into what's coming next for April Moon anyway. Yeah, I wanted to add it's so much fun working with Jamie and Jason, mainly because they're so different in the way they think about things. I hope they don't mind me saying. Because Jamie's so intuitive. Like she'll say like, oh, this, this part needs something brighter or this part is, there's something wrong with this part. And there is, and you know it in your heart, but you can't really put your finger on it. And Jason is really technical and he can be like, oh no, that's the thing that's wrong with it. And he can like point out the thing. So as a team together, they're just amazing to work with. It's like the left brain and the right brain working together. And so it's, it's really interesting working with them. Now I want to talk a little bit about filming the music video. So the first idea we have for the music video was to shoot a sort of VHS, sort of like old holiday footage style, like we were all on holiday together, which is of course what we did in the end. But then we started to plan moments from that music video. And the first thought I had was, I want, <laughs> I don't know why, I want to put an ice cream on Jason's head. And I had this image like of Jamie filming it and laughing and me like smashing this ice cream on Jason's head. A bit um, sadistic of me, but I just really wanted to, just really wanted to put an ice cream on Jason's head. It was some, it was mainly the main reason why we made the song in the video. No, I'm joking. But it was, uh, <coughs> I really wanted to get that scene there and we did it. And filming that, we did it on the main street in the end. I imagined doing it in like a beach in the middle of nowhere or like, I don't know, a place where there wasn't many people. We ended up doing it on the main street <laughs> right outside the ice cream shop. And uh, a few people saw, I think a lot of people laughed. Some people were like, that guy is such an asshole, you know? Why is he putting ice cream in that guy's head? And then Jason chased me down the street. I think people thought we literally had an argument and he was angry at me, but it was hilarious. And it was fully consensual. I know it's good acting from Jason. It looks surprising, but he did he did agree that I could put the ice cream in his head. So he knew it was coming. He knew it was coming. So <clears throat> when we were making the video, uh, we all had kind of little ideas for stuff we wanted to see in there. I know Harry's big dream is to put ice cream on my head for some reason. Which was amazing. <laughs> Wait till we do another video together. Wait till you see what ideas I have. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, one, of my, my, one of my ideas was I wanted there to be this kind of sad looking overworked guy in a suit um, wandering around, you know, working on his laptop and drinking his coffee and things like that. And um, so we, we had a heck of a time finding a suit jacket oh on God. the island, you know. And um, someone was actually going to bring us a suit jacket. From the UK, in From their the suitcase. UK, in their suitcase, bring it for me to wear. At the last second, um, we found one. Yeah. I found one in the charity shop. There's yeah. like one big charity shop in town that has clothing and stuff, and I managed to find one in there that worked. And unfortunately, you wore it in the seat, and I'm pretty sure it wrecked the jacket. Yeah, it got wet, and Jamie was like, no, we got to bring the jacket back and give Someone it back to the charity shop. It. So I've been hauling this wet jacket. It must have weighed like 40 pounds, you know, and like I'm carrying it around. <laughs> Funny, is it? That's it. it. In the bin it goes, so yeah. That was that it. That jacket went away. Yeah. yeah, and like even the accessories for Suit Man, like originally we had all this stuff planned out where he would have like an old fashioned phone that he'd pick up and talk on and all this stuff. And like we couldn't find any of the props. And so finally I ended up making him a laptop out of like, uh, I think it was like a cardboard piece of a beer box <laughs> and like tin foil and had a little paper. Keys. I had to draw it all on with Sharpie. It looked quite good though, I like it was for great. a cardboard laptop. Yeah. But um, that was about the extent of your office supplies. We managed to like <laughs> bring some coffee mugs from the kitchen so it looked like you're at the office. But uh, I think the effect was still good, even without like all of the crazy office supplies that we wanted to have in there. Suit man. We called him suit, suit man. man. <laughs> suit man in the sea and in the desert. Another story about the video. We wanted to get a clip of us all running into the sea and it's actually the final clip of the video when the sun comes up at the very end and we're all like swimming in the sea. Well, we all run in, jump in and Jason forgot to take his glasses off 
and he dived in, came up without his glasses on, and they'd gone missing in the sea. And it was really strong current that day. And me and Jay, uh, me and Jason were just like looking in the sea, trying to find them. And after like a couple of minutes, Jason was like, "Look, we've lost them. That they're, they're gone." And in that moment, I looked down one last time, and I saw the glint of his sunglasses in under the sea. So I didn't even hesitate. And I dived down, grabbed them, and came up with his glasses. It was like a miracle, honestly. He's like, "Oh my god, thank you so much." And then literally. A minute later, not even joking, he was like, "Okay, chuck me the phone. I'll get some. I'll get some videos of you and Jamie swimming." I was like, "Okay." So I gave him my phone. About ten seconds after, a big wave came, knocked at Jason, <laughs> and he fell into the sea and dropped my phone. He came up. He's like, "I dropped the phone," and we were like, "Oh my god, Jason!" <laughs> and so now again, I'm looking for the phone. We're all looking like, "Oh my god, Jason, you're so clumsy," and I spot my phone, dive down, grab it. Luckily, my phone's waterproof. And pull it up, and so don't give Jason any valuables near the sea or water or liquids in general. So that that's the lesson I learned from filming Happy Place with uh, with Jason and Jamie. <laughs> yeah, the whole experience of writing the song, recording it, making the video with April Moon was so so cool. It was so much fun. It was nice just to go around and pretend like we we're on holiday, and just mess around making the video, coming up with ideas, and then sharing it with you guys. And We had such a lovely response. We're really glad that you like the song and the video. If you haven't seen it yet, check out Happy Place. It's on Spotify and Apple Music, and the video is on YouTube. You can see Jason getting ice cream, becoming a uh, we call it an angry unicorn, chasing me down the street with an ice cream in his head. We want to thank uh, Harry for um, you know for doing this thing with us, this project. It was so much fun. It was fantastic. Can't wait to do another one. And uh, all you guys for listening to the song. I hope you liked it. I hope it uh, reminded you of your happy place, whether that's in Fortaventura or somewhere else. We really appreciate it, and it's what makes it all worth doing: sharing it and hearing, you know, your guys' reaction to it. So, thanks so much for watching, guys. See you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.